are back up in the mountains today uh, on a beautiful day, blue skies. It's supposed to be 90 degrees today, which is actually probably a little bit too hot to be doing this, <laughs> but uh, I had to take advantage of the nice day. We just had nothing but rain. And speaking of rain, I'm supposed to get some today uh, in a few hours, actually, thunderstorms. Uh, crossing my fingers that the weatherman's wrong. Usually isn't. <laughs> you gotta be optimistic, right? So we'll probably be walking out of here in the rain, but we'll see. We'll go as long as we can today. This area has lots of stone walls. It has one cellar, uh, but we're gonna look around to do some exploring, see if maybe we can find some more outbuildings, storage, uh, storage buildings, other structures that we haven't found yet out of here. So we're gonna do some wandering, do some metal detecting, and uh, see if we can find something cool. Alright, well, uh, we found our first target here. It's a giant tomback button, big old coat button. This is good news for a lot of reasons. First of all, um, this puts us in the 1700s. And uh, it also is good news because this was a big, beautiful, loud target. And the landowner had said that he had given permission to somebody to metal detect this area in the 90s, and they missed this. So that uh, looks good for our prospects to find some good old stuff out here today. Let's keep going and uh, keep watching the sky. Well, it's, uh, it's not uncommon to find nails, and it's not uncommon to find nondescript pieces of lead, but this has got to be the first lead nail <laughs> I've ever found. Now, it's, it might not be a nail nail, it might just be like a pin, uh, but it's definitely lead. I can bend it easily. It's white. And this definitely looks like it's peened over like it was in something pounded in with a hammer. Maybe this was like a colonial shear pin type deal that it was made to break if there was too much strain on it. Not sure, but it's pretty interesting. Let's keep going. Well, I just got a little target right at the edge of this fairly young tree. And uh, I thought for sure it was going to be garbage because sometimes uh, metal detectorists, if they find junk, instead of carrying it around their bag, they'll throw it up against a tree. I found that uh, in several places. But I dug it and it wound up, it, it might have been thrown here by another metal detectorist, but uh, I'm certainly going to keep it. Now when I first dug it up, I thought that it was going to be like a suspenders type clip. But uh, I think that it's quite a bit older. I think this is more colonial era. Um, it resembles a shoe buckle in a lot of ways. I don't think that's what this is, but I do think that it's of the same era. You can see it's got the curve to it. There's a pin that goes all the way through with the two tines. That's pretty cool. I'm going to call that a good find, and if somebody <laughs> threw it away, well, too bad for them, I guess. All right, let's keep moving. All right, well, I think uh, we just got a coin. It didn't really read high enough to be a coin, so probably British, I would guess. Let's see here. It has these weird indents in it, you see that? Never seen anything quite like that before. Let me uh, do some work on it here, see if I can get it cleaned up. Alright, well, it's definitely a coin, um, but as far as what it is, I have no idea. If I were to venture, I guess, I would say it's a, a British coin, probably George II. It could also potentially be a state coin, like a kinetic copper, but, uh, you know, there's nothing on there. Hard to say. Hey, I'll take that. <laughs> I might even be able to do some more extreme measures on it when I get home and get some detail, but... Even if not, it's pretty cool. It's an old copper, 250, 300 year old copper. Very cool. Let's keep going. So uh, this time of year, the cicadas are screaming up in the trees. If you can hear that. Uh, there's also a fly bug in me right now, which made me remember to mention. Uh, if you ever notice, I have dirt all over my face. Uh, it's not because I'm, I'm trying to be Rambo. It's because I have dirt on my hands, and then as I walk through these trees, there are just spider webs everywhere. And I walk into them face first, and I have them all over my face, and I'm doing this to get them off. 
and I get a dirty face. So periodically I'll take out my phone and look and <laughs> clean off my face a little bit so I don't look like a goon. Which leads me to another thought. Uh, people ask almost every video, sometimes multiple people, um, about our tick situation. This year hasn't been too bad. I started metal detecting this year in like March and believe it or not, it was the worst then. Um, I would come home and I would have two or three ticks on me. Um, maybe one of them stuck in, but uh, as long as you get to them pretty quick, you know, the same day, a couple hours later, you can just pull them out and not really have to worry about Lyme disease too much. So anyway, uh, the ticks the, so far this year, after maybe June, haven't had one of them on me. I don't know, uh, maybe it's been too wet. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but... But anyway, yes, ticks, I don't worry about them, I don't spray, I just make sure I check when I get home and shower and uh, make sure they're not in me. We're going to keep going and uh, try to avoid those spider webs. <laughs> Well, I have just found a mystery item. I know how much people love those. Now, it appears to be damaged down at this end. It is brass. It's very, very thick. It's very flat on this side. And then this side, maybe you can see the shape to it. That's very, very cool. Let's see if there's anything else down here. Not that I can tell. Well, I, I'd like to know what came out the rest of this end, but um, what do you think? Maybe just like a door hinge? Very decorative hinge of some kind? Don't know. We're going to keep going. Maybe we'll find more of it. All right, we have got another really nice target here. 84, 83. I'm optimistic about this one. Let's see. Nice, a little round disc. Is it a coin? Oh yeah, that's a coin. Jeez, man. <laughs> Oops, dropped it back down the hole. Let's get it cleaned off. All right. All right, well, I don't have a positive ID on it, but we have a Britannia on the back. I don't know if you can see that, her, uh, hand up here on the left side holding that big long spear or stick. We flip it over, it is pretty corroded and uh, if we try scrubbing it or scratching it, all the detail is going to come off. I do think that it's Connecticut. I think that the, the text over here, which would normally be a Roman numeral for which George it is, I think there's text, uh, which I think is Connecticut. C-O. I think I see a C-O. What do you think? Something like that. So that's what we're going to call it, Connecticut Copper. This is probably a 1787, or at least very, very close to that. Man, what is going on with these airplanes today? <laughs> Non-stop. All right, anyway, so this is an amazing find. I love finding state coins. So much history behind them. I wish it was in a little bit better shape, but certainly not complaining. Beautiful. Let's keep going. Thunder in the distance. Uh, it's hard to describe to you exactly how far out into the wilderness I am right now. But it doesn't matter how far out you are, you seem to always find these balloons. Somebody let this one go. Probably had a great time watching it fly up and disappear. But here it sits, in the middle of the mountains. It's gross. I'm going to pack that up and put it in my bag. It doesn't weigh anything, so it's not a big deal. And we'll clean up the woods just a little bit. We find those a lot, unfortunately. All right, I got a pretty nice target here. 7980. It sounds really loud, so it might just be something modern on the surface, but 
we're gonna film it anyway. It's certainly pretty close to the surface. Oh, here it is. Nice! Look at that. That's a little colonial shoe buckle. Man, I uh, I found quite a few of these recently, almost every trip out, but it doesn't get old. Oh, that is beautiful. A little brass shoe buckle. You know, in these pine forests, uh, a lot of times the roots will push uh, stuff to the surface. Like that. I thought for sure this was going to be a modern bottle cap, but it's not. Colonial shoe buckle. Instead, crazy. <laughs> All right, that's uh, beautiful. I love finding these things. This beats a uh, smooth copper any day in my book. All right, I'm happy. Let's keep looking. All right, well, you guys uh, sick of seeing buttons yet? <laughs> well, I had to show this one. The sun might be a little bright to see it, but this is a Tomback button, and it has this beautiful, intricate flower design. And uh, the thing you have to keep in mind with these is that this was all done by hand with a set of uh, engraving tools. Somebody would have went around and carved all that in there, craftsperson. You have to imagine how many of these would have made up a garment of clothing, and then how many garments of clothing they would have sold. It's a lot of work and a lot of passion put into work like this. So we're nearing the end of the day today. We're not quite done, but I was detecting around. I found a really nice target. I dug it. It happened to be a little pewter spoon. And I started looking around, kind of reading the, reading the area here, and I started detecting around more, and there are just high tones and targets absolutely everywhere. And I just noticed right here, check it out, there's a little square depression right there, right amongst these pines. And that is another new home site. Amazing. Uh, nobody knew this was up here. I mean, the landowner doesn't know this one is here. He only knew of the one. So I'm going to do one of the hardest things that I've had to do. I'm not going to dig any of these targets, and I'm going to, I'm going to start walking out. We're going to save these for another day, and I'll hopefully get another whole day of metal detecting out of it. You don't know how much I want to just go around and dig all the high tones, which are more than likely, you know, big buttons and coins and buckles and stuff, but we'll leave them in the ground this week and uh, come back, if not next week, pretty soon. Awesome. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue walking towards the truck um, and we're just gonna kinda detect down the way along the stone walls and leave this spot for later. Crazy. <sighs> okay, I, uh, sorry, I'm shaking. I, um, I got a 79 target, which on my metal detector, is like is usually a button and I dug it up and it's not a button <laughs> uh, sorry um, I took it out of the hole and I already looked at it I didn't even think to get out my camera because I didn't think that it was gonna be anything but a button but um it's very big see it here oh my god that is so big that is so big. What the heck is that? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let me get my water out here. Oh my God, what the heck is this? Oh my gosh. Oh my God, I have no idea, is that Spanish? Oh my God, I think that's Spanish, look at that. That is insane. This would have been so much money back then. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh. oh my God, it's so thick and heavy. I really don't want to scratch it. Oh my god, look at that thing. Oh, it's definitely Spanish. Holy smokes, that did not ring up. 
like I would have expected this to ring up. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so big. Oh my god. All right, it's Spanish. There's the uh, little M with the circle, which is a Mexico City mint mark. Whew. Wow. Let me see if I can locate the date here. All right, well, I don't see a date on it. I can see uh, that there's something down here at the bottom with a little zero or an O. I don't know if that's a date or not. Uh, definitely it's an eight real coin. You see eight real. It's as big as they got. <laughs> that's insane. Oh my God. All right. This is, uh, this is definitely the biggest piece of silver I've ever found, and it being so old and Spanish definitely ranks up with one of the coolest things I've ever found in my life. An 8 real, and it didn't even ring that high in the metal detector. It was less than a normal copper. Maybe it was standing up on edge. That is uh, memorable for sure. Unbelievable. All right, well, I think with on that note, I'm gonna call it a day. Let's uh, pack everything up and do a quick recap and uh, start walking home. Man, unbelievable. All right, and uh, with that, <laughs> unbelievable. We're starting to cloud up. Um, I hear some rumbles in the distance. What a day. A day I'm gonna remember forever. For sure. All right, let's uh, take a look at what we found here. We found seven just absolutely beautiful buttons. Um, a bunch of them are tomback, and they're all hand engraved. We have our very odd lead nail, um, which I'm going to call like a shear pin type situation. Uh, but what its actual use was for, your guess is as good as mine. We have a beautiful colonial era shoe buckle, and our smaller little buckle, which I'm going to say is from the same era. This is just a piece of lead, fired musket ball. Our mystery item, again, I'm gonna say maybe a little brass hinge, but it's hard to say, there's no holes or anything in it. And lastly, I have the three coins that I found today. Something just fell out of a tree over there. Uh, we have our, so our Connecticut coin, our, our really smooth uh, colonial era coin, and our enormous eight real. I know it's hard to tell how big it is without it being in in a hand but look at that that is just absolutely enormous piece of silver would have been equivalent to uh, a dollar I think so a hundred of these would have been this incredible I haven't had uh, any cell service in the last probably six hours you think they're looking for me <laughs> just kidding my wife knows where I am just an absolutely incredible day. Um, I'm so happy that I was able to capture it on film, at least to some extent. I don't film targets ahead of time that um, are below 80. I try to capture the coins as live digs, and I uh, didn't do a great job of that today. <laughs> uh, that I would have thought that that coin would have rung like 100, but it was just a 79. You never know, I guess. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Incredible. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.